Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's great to have you here. My name is Barry Marshall and this is the CNC Modeler channel. Today we're going to be looking at more of the uh, flying wing that I've been developing in Fusion 360. If you do like what you see, uh, please do subscribe to my channel. It makes a difference, helps me out, helps other people find the channel, as does if you hit that uh, thumbs up, hit that like button. And if you want to find out about my new videos, then please do hit that notification bell and you'll get notified when new things come along. Um, so there's some CAD work, there's a quick look at Simplify 3D, and then there's some uh, videos of printing and some of the prototyping I've been doing. So as you can see, this is what the uh, model will look like when it's finished. Uh, there's some holes for servos to sit in, and uh, yeah. So it's looking pretty good. So let's just have a quick look at um, how that print's going to work. So where I want to get to is, I want to be able to print something that looks like this. We'll talk about that in a bit more in a minute. And I want to print something that looks like this. And these are the two sections, so notice they're connected, and I'll discuss that in a bit. So let's have a look at the um, design process in Fusion and some of the tweaks I've had to do, uh, especially around structure to improve printability and also to reinforce the training and leading edges because um, I keep on getting layer splits. So here we uh, are looking at the CAD. Um, what we're looking at here is I uh, decided to replace the structure. So you'll see when we look at the 3D printing that uh, it's important that these these surfaces here um, track up the um, quarter cord line because that's the direction I want to print. And so this line here will be flat on the bed. And it means that these two angles here are the same and appropriate for 3D printing with the layer heights that I'm using. So um, why is it important that I've now generated these individually as bodies? It's because if I use those bodies, I can use create pattern pattern along path. You can only do this with bodies. And so I can create a pattern along that cord, cord line, and I can create a pattern along this line that's perpendicular to that, giving me, uh, well, let's show you. So first off, generate that pattern that way. So um, that's given me one of those. So I now combine those into one element. Then I pattern the other way and I combine those into an element. And then I'm pulling up uh, to a leading and trailing edge um, to close that pattern uh, structure at the leading and trailing edge. That's The idea of that is to try and help with layer adhesion and just to remove some discontinuities around where the edges of the structure were. So once we've got that, and then I've obviously got my box for cutting the structure out. And then when you do all that together, you end up with something like this. And I've used the same process in terms of using a surface to trim the top of this just underneath the surface of the wing IML. Uh, so now let's move on. There's some other extras that I've put in here. So if we scrub along a bit, you can see here, I've put some cuts in the trailing edge. Uh, again, that's to help to try and um, pr improve layer adhesion by putting a bit more uh, material in that trailing edge. And then if we come on, and you can just see here that I've also punched a hole through the leaned edge. So the print will go up there, around there, back and then back and then up again because there's a little slit down here. Um, the idea of being again to try and thicken up the leading edge for durability and to improve layer adhesion to reduce splitting. So if we now move on you can see I've cut a hole for the servo and um, move on to here. You can see now uh, so I've got a leading uh, spar uh, main center spar. This leading spar is just really to stop the wings rotating and then this tube with its supports, these are supports top and bottom, that goes all the way to the servo to carry the servo wire. 
then if we scroll on a bit more uh, you can see now I've punched in the hole for the battery and shortly hopefully you'll see the hole for the um, uh, receiver as well so now if we turn you'll notice I've got the two things split into two parts now so if we turn that off you can see those details so you can see how these uh, carrier tubes are um, supported by that little bit of structure and how they run just short of the upper surface just like the structure does and how this is a void that runs all the way out through and what we do towards the end just go through and uh, build up uh, so now we need to build up the parts that make up the um, the actual printable items so if I turn off the wing give Fusion a couple of seconds to catch up I don't know why it's been doing this recently Okay, so Fusion's done its thing. So if we look at the individual components, so if I turn that on, we'll be able to see that better. So first off, I've mirrored this, these two, because uh, the idea is I want them to be stable when they print. So they're going to be printed that way up. So I want them to be stable. And I also want to continue with spiral vice printing, even though I've got the two. So I've created this web between the two. That will tie them together and hopefully make them more stable. And it will also uh, mean that I get a single spiral base print so I don't get any movement between the two bodies and I don't get any stringing or retraction issues and all that sort of stuff. So there's that in terms of that one. And then if I go turn that one off and I turn on this, I've got the same for the center body section. Again, you can see. Now I am thinking I probably need to put the hex structure in here, but um, as you can see for now, it's uh, yeah, it's okay. There we go. So then, if I pull the both in, you can see uh, how that kind of looks. Okay, and then all we do to generate the STLs are right click save as STL and that will export an STL file that we can then stick in to Simplify 3D. So let's go there next. So now we're in Simplify 3D so if we pull the model in from Fusion so remember I exported it as an STL so in here is the outer wing small and all we've got to do is drop this onto drop this surface onto the bed so place surface on bed Think center and arrange and we're ready to rock. So in the process um, basically we've got a um, single outline corkscrew printing um, and everything else is basically just tinkering to be honest that's the most important thing. Okay so if we hit prepare to print Here we see you've got the model. Um, so we go from a solid to, because we're just doing the perimeters, uh, something that's like this. If we bring that up and zoom in, you can see I've got quite a large um, uh, brim uh, around the part and infill on the first layer. So if we play this. You can see these diagonals growing, so this is what it's important to have it growing upwards. So these are vertical, and then these are diagonals are running off at the same angle in both directions. So it means the layers stack up. Um, you do have to keep the layer heights low to get that stacking to work, hence why it was 0.2 mil layers. Uh, and that's just a function of the angle, layer height, and the width of the um, filament that you're extruding. Uh, so the nozzle width. So as you can see, I pulled that pocket through, came through there, and we're just going up. 
and uh, yeah so it's just printing that in terms of uh, uh, just a spiral print um, so it thinks all of these voids are solids and since I've told it no infill and of course these you can see these slots that you cut in it thinks that's not part of the solid so that's part of the surface that it's generating so now it's time to have a look at the printing and this is not going to go well spoilers so as you can see i've got quite a large brim and uh, the print's going really well so far i've had a few issues with layer shift you can just see the ailerons coming in there and then you can see the uh, spar tube finishing off and just the tube running up for the servos uh, in a second you'll see the pocket for the servo come up so there you go there's the pocket for the servo so that's coming up nicely and yeah everything seems to be going really well so apart from that I don't know if you noticed it but it seemed to uh, bury the heater nozzle into the print I don't know why that happened there's nothing in the G code for it so you can see there's this hole and uh, burnt spot, dirty spot in the middle of the model. Then of course after that all hell breaks loose. And um, <laughs> yes, yeah, bird's nest city. Now what more can you say? But these things happen every now and then and with 3D printing you have to get used to it. So here's a quick look at what I've uh, been doing over the last couple of weeks. Obviously the uh, this first piece here, if we have a look, that's all the bird's nest from that last print. And you can see just in the top there, you can see where the hot end crashed into the print. I don't know why the te table raised, I don't get that at all. But anyway, we can uh, look into that. Um, hopefully it was just a glitch on the printer. Uh, the middle orange group, you can see there was uh, a layer shift that had. Um, this is, uh, if you've been... On RC groups in the uh, 3D printed aircraft section, you'll uh, have seen us chatting about this. So that was the ridging I was getting from the uh, lead screw and the test print that fixed it. Here's some uh, a, an old reprint of a structure test piece that I did just to make sure the printer with the new filament was running okay. You can see battery and radio install uh, locations and servo install locations. So yeah, I've been doing quite a lot recently, uh, hence why last week's video was quite short. Um, so anyway, there you go. I don't really know what more to say. There's been a lot of work going on, as you can see, a lot of prototyping going on. Um, and uh, so if you do like the videos, please do subscribe, please do like, um, you know, have a look at my website. and. Uh, if you like this sort of thing, then have a look at the videos that are linked at the end, just coming up now. Thank you. Cheers.